and a good afternoon, Baldy. How the heck are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's good to be with you guys. It's always great to talk with you, and uh, I need you right now because we do a, a bet on the show every week where we have to pick a team that's going to win. And in the regular season, you know, you have all the teams, but you can only pick the same team twice. Well, we reset it for the playoffs. I've already taken San Francisco, which barely got me through the division round. That was nervy. But now I got my other three options open. Out of those three teams, Baldy, which one are you most confident Detroit, Baltimore, Kansas City will be emerging to the Super Bowl? Mm, Most confident. I can make a case for all of them, but that's not what you want to hear. Um, I need the one. I, I would never bet against Patrick Mahomes, except that uh, I believe in Baltimore and what they're doing and how they're playing uh, collectively as a group. So I would take uh, I would take the Ravens. Okay. I, I'm most confident about them right now. Now, what does your case for Detroit sound like? Because after watching them beat up on on the Cowboys, I think a lot of people would love that story with Dan Campbell, a North Texas guy, trying to take his Lions to the Super Bowl. Well, I mean, look they they're they're a very talented team. They're young. Um, they play with a lot of emotion. They're very talented. They've, they're very well coached on both sides of the ball. And, you know, they have a, a mentality from Dan that says we're going to be more aggressive than anybody because the only way you can win it all is by being aggressive and literally putting your foot on the gas. And, I don't know, they've gone for 40-something fourth down attempts this year, fake punts in their own end zone. Um, like, they have no fear. And they're – they have, to this point, they have had no fear about the consequences of some of those things backfiring, which they have. But ultimately, maybe that's what, you know, allows them to defeat San Francisco on Sunday. Well, is their center, Frank Ragnow, maybe the most underrated offensive lineman in football? I mean, the numbers with him out of the lineup, they're like a different offense. Well, I mean, if your center is weak, your offense is not going to be great. And your offensive line is going to be average at best. The center is the glue that keeps everything together. First of all, he's calling the protections, making sure everybody understands that we've got five, you know, five, you know, five people with one mind, all that kind of stuff. You know, so you're getting in and out of the right plays and protections. And then, you know, any kind of you, you attack the weakness in in the middle at center. Um, the quarterback can evade the Micah Parsons and Nick Bosa's of the world uh, pretty good, but if they can't step up because the center is just giving up too much ground. Um, that's a problem for any quarterback. And so Frank is, uh, I don't know if he's underrated. I think he's, you know, uh, all pro player, but, um, but yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty clear that if he's not in the lineup, they're a different team. Football super beast, Brian Baldinger with us here in the G bag nation, his play caller there in Detroit, uh, Ben Johnson. He is, uh, it looks to be like he is the front runner to be the next head coach of the commander. So he'll be in this division with the uh, with the front runners, the Eagles and the Giants, how uh, how nervous should Cowboys fans be, or how excited should Commanders fans be if they're getting this Detroit Lions play caller? Uh, they should be excited in Washington. Um, he is a there's not a game that I study from Detroit where I don't see something that I might not have seen before ever, or I might have seen someplace else, but he used it differently. I mean, he's a very creative guy, and it's taking advantage of whether it's field position, down distance, matchups, uh, whether you're on the left half or the right hash, and how it sets the formations. I mean, it's just even, you know, the the touchdown to Amon Ross St. Brown last week, they had a twin set to the wide side of the field. They anticipated man coverage. They thought they were blitzing. Everything he thought was right. And then they get the switch route to Amon Ross. He's got all this real estate to work. Like, it's just one of those things that I don't know that everybody – that calls offenses can do that in real time, you know, and the way that he did that and structured that play, it was, it's very difficult to stop, but he did, he does that all the time. He's, he's very clever. He's very talented. And I think Washington's getting a good one. Hey, Baldy, uh, you played football in a different era where, um, you know, that you didn't have the social media and all that stuff going on. What do you make about, family members getting involved in conversations and back and forth with fans and all that. How how would you, if you were a modern day player here, how would you handle that with your family? Uh, Like, you know, I don't know that you could police it. I mean, it's social media. I mean, you're, you can't tell somebody not to say something. Um, It has been going on since social media has been out there. And 
I just think you have to kind of live with it. I mean, it really doesn't have any effect on the team, even though that person might be speaking for a guy on that team. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the danger is this what he really thinks. So what? Like everybody has their own thoughts about how a coach is and what he's doing wrong or what the organization is doing right or wrong. And so that's okay. I mean, what are you going to do? Just shut down their account or block it or whatever? I mean, there's nothing you can really do. The season ended for the Cowboys. Whatever somebody is saying right now is going to bring that season back for them. You know, they got to be better next year in a lot of different ways that they're going to advance. And so when you, when you lay a dud in the playoffs like the Cowboys did for a third year in a row, I mean, you should expect some kind of backlash. And yeah. It might even be from family members. Well, Jason Kelsey was partying with Bills Mafia, shirtless, taking the bowling ball shots. Have you gotten to party and get wild with Bills Mafia before and ever done the bowling ball shot? I haven't done the bowling ball, but it's kind of hard not to um, blend in with the Bills Mafia. They're just so inviting. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I remember one time I was late for a game. I had a helicopter in from the Buffalo airport to make it on time, and I landed right in the middle of a Bills Mafia party. And I got a job to go do. I had to go you know, do a game, announce a game. And, um, but you know, you still had to do some sort of toast with them. They weren't going to let you just run to your booth. So you do, you do those kind of things. <laughs> it's Brian Baldinger here with you on 105 through the fan brought to you by old spice gentlemen's blend body wash, providing exfoliation plus 24 seven moisturization because men have skin too. Can we circle back to talking about the center? Um, because the Cowboys run game, you know, was disappointing. And, and you know, we're we're wondering if the Cowboys should be moving on from Tyler Biotish. How would you look at that? And, and is that where their run game went wrong? No, uh, I thought Tyler had a better year. I thought he was more physical. Um, but he's certainly not at the caliber of some of the Cowboys centers, whether it's Stepnowski or the guy before Biotish. He's Frederick. not at that caliber. Yeah, yeah Step Frederick. So, um, you know, he's not at that caliber. So I think if you have a chance to upgrade – at any position, I thought Tyler, I know how hard he worked in the offseason to get stronger and all that kind of stuff. Um, but every position should be under a microscope in Dallas right now about, you know, what needs to be, what can be improved at every position. I think it should be under the microscope. How about defensive coordinator Dan Quinn getting more more interviews? Is, is that a guy that Cowboys fans should hope to have back? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's, he was a little, um, you know, short change. I mean, you're playing safeties at linebacker, you know, for the better part of the season, and they got pushed around against Green Bay pretty good. I mean, Dan can only put on the field what he has to work with. Like, I don't understand, you know, I understand Van Resch got hurt and some things, but, you know, you're not going to you're not gonna win. You're not going to stop good teams from running the football with safeties playing linebacker. You're just going to get pushed around, and they did. And so is that Dan Quinn's fault? Like, he's just trying to utilize the, the bodies that he has and trying to make best of it. So I can't put all that blame on Dan. If you had to pick one thing that we just talked about that you would want to guarantee is better when you get to January football next year if you make the playoffs, stopping the run or running it relative to the Cowboys, what do they need to fix first? Well, if you're looking at the teams that remain, if you look at the two number one seeds and you look at the linebacker player, Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, and Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, I mean, they're the two best tandems of linebackers in football. And both defenses are ranked one and two in this league in large part because they never come off the field, the versatility that they have, the speed that they play the game with, and the plays that we make. So Greenlaw gets two interceptions to ice the game against Green Bay. Roquan Smith has led the team in tackles since the day he got there. I'd say shore up their linebacker position and play it at the level that you have to play at if you want to win big playoff games. Baldy, and people who build teams or will tell you that, oh, that's poor use of assets and management. So we get into a time where, like, I don't give a damn. You need to have linebackers. I don't care about your <laughs> thoughts about, you know, building team this way or building team that way. Or it's poor use of your cap or whatever. you got to have linebackers to play in this league, right? Yes, and, you know, the, the Baltimore's defense, Mike McDonald's a good coordinator. Um, and he's a talent, talented guy, the things that he's doing. But everybody in Baltimore will tell you that that defense changed the day Roquan Smith was traded for. Sure. Patrick Queen became better. He wasn't a good play caller. It was too much on his plate to handle. Roquan took it over the day he got there. Uh, he became the leader of the defense the day he got there. Baltimore has a history of great middle linebackers uh, since they became a franchise, and they needed that guy, and he changed the entire defense. 
the number one defensive football for a reason. They they put resources at that position, and it pays off for them. Brian Baldinger with us here in the G-Bag Nation. Fangio uh, looks like he's out in Miami as their defensive coordinator. All signs pointing to him being the Eagles' next defensive coordinator. Is Fangio still as as feared uh, by offenses as he was for the better part of the last decade or so? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, look, look, when you lose Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb and, you know, Javon Holland, you're losing three, you know, basically Pro Bowl caliber players. I mean, he couldn't fix that defense. But even with those guys, I mean, they weren't feared. Teams were, you know, putting up big numbers on them. I, mean, I think Vic is still talented. Um, he had his chances being a head coach, and that didn't work out in Denver. But I think – I don't think he's – like, I, I would fear what Mike McDonald's doing in Baltimore – a great deal more than what we saw from Vic Fangio in his last couple of stops. We had the uh, fumble in the Chiefs-Bills game that people were complaining about with the touchback rule. Mm. And we saw a couple of years ago they changed the overtime rules because of the amazing Bills-Chiefs game. What do you think about that touchback rule? It, in any other part of the field, it's fumbled out of bounds, the offensive team retains it, but if it goes out of bounds in the end zone, then it's a touchback. Do you like it? Would you keep it? No, I don't like it at all. I never liked it. I thought it was too harsh. Um, it's it, like... First of all, the defense didn't recover it. So it's not like they they might have forced it, but they didn't recover it. So it goes out of bounds, it goes out of bounds in the end zone. I get it. But why does the offense get the ball to 20? Like, make them, if you're going to give the ball back to them, give it to them at the one-yard line and make them come out of the end zone and earn it, earn that keep, like give the defense a chance. I, I just think it's too harsh. The offense didn't, rec- the defense didn't recover the ball. The offense gets the ball and they get the ball to the 20-yard line. It just seems like it's too much of a reward at that point. I understand everybody will say, well, don't fumble it. Well, you're going to penalize, you know, Des Bryant for trying to score a touchdown when, you know, was that a fumble or not a fumble? Like, you're going to try to penalize greatness? Like, these kids are trying to score and, and, put, and, and, and make great plays. Okay, you lose track of the ball. It happens. But, like, I just think it's too harsh of a penalty. Baldy, I've become uh, fascinated by the smelling salts that we see uh, each and every football game day. We saw Baker Mayfield going crazy on those things before he led his Buccaneer team to victory versus the Eagles. Were you a smelling salts guy before games? Absolutely. During the games, all game, I had at least three in my sock just to go onto the field. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you did it on kickoff coverage. You did it to go out there for the opening drive of the game. You did it in the weight room on Friday when you're trying to set your bench press record. Um, you did it on Friday night before you started chugging beers. I mean, I always had smelly salts with me. Okay, that's beautiful because I, I'm I'm looking for I'm going to try it here very very soon. Maybe Radio Row, whatever. Yeah, but don't it's... wimp out. Don't wimp. I mean, take the inhale, like you know, pop it and like just suck it all up. Like don't try to, don't don't shortchange yourself. Get the full effect. Right. Oh, yeah. Like make sure that you it feel you feel it through every core puzzle in your body. Okay. It's wise words. A pro tip right there from Baldy. Now, uh, c- could you describe the feeling? Like, is it like 30 seconds of intense, like, uh, just high-level testosterone crazy person? Is it like 60 seconds? How long is this smelling salts high? Well, if you've never seen the Pacific Ocean before, and I had to describe the Pacific Ocean to you, it's not fair. Like, I, I okay. don't want to take away your thrill. Okay. Yeah. So I don't want to, I don't, like, you know, jump out of the plane if you're going to skydive. Like, I don't want to tell you what that free fall is like. Just just do it and get your own experience. I like it. Yeah, words can't even describe just how incredible the feeling is. I, I can't it. wait. It, it's going to be special, Baldy. We're going to bring these out to Radio Row. Hope, maybe we could do it together. Maybe we could do a Radio Row uh, salt-smelling moment with Baldy and the G-Bag Nation. I'm never, I'm, I'm never out of uh, frame of mind of doing a smelling salt. Yes. <laughs> All right, badass. Okay, um, uh, uh, Old Spice questions of the day. Are we, you know it. Have yeah, we let's arrived? Do, let's hit yeah. them, yeah. Baldy. Okay, uh, Baldy, when it comes to uh, the man who does the seated peeing, uh, is it ever okay? Well, there is, I mean, there is, uh, there is a time when it's okay. okay. You know, if after you finish number two, if there's something that us has to – dribble out to finish the pro process right then that would be the only time otherwise no there's there's a there's a seat for the other person that uses the seat is it true that you can't two without wanting at the same time mm, at the same time just you know if you're, if you're sitting down for a two eventually you're going to one right uh not not always but th- there is a good chance that that can happen uh w- it's, you- i mean it's just uh you study the excretory system you know when you study gray's anatomy i mean you you learn about these things so Sometimes they follow each other. 
Mm. The, people forget the B in Baldy stands for biology. Damn yeah. right. And Bullchuck's <laughs> always dropping the ball there. Uh, okay, when it, when it comes to being hygienic, who would you who would you describe Baldy in your playing days as perhaps the least hygienic teammate you ever had? Mm. Well, anybody that would not shower after practice or after game and just throw their clothes on and um, you know head out to the car. I mean, there's yeah. a couple of people like that. So, I mean, all those people, they, they just kind of group them all together. Like, wow. you know, they're just, yeah. Even on a road trip, you're going to get back on the plane without showering? There, there's some There's some that, I've not been, there's not necessarily games, but practice for sure. Some people would just, like, just go and change. And and uh, I don't know what they did. I don't know, you know, I don't know how they lived with themselves, but they did it. Was it fair or foul, the Bills turning off the hot water at the Chiefs so they couldn't get hot showers? <laughs> did I, I didn't know that. Did that happen? Oh, yeah. Allegedly. And I think that Is it's that gamesmanship, true? baby. Yeah. Uh, I've not heard that. That doesn't sound like Bill's Mafia, but I guess they were just that ticked off about how things went that day. Somebody was. Yeah, Baldy, uh, We Eric just disclosed that he's uh, finishing his wife's wings, like the ends of the, of the wings, like on the plate. She doesn't go for the complete consumption of the wings. Fair or foul? Well, I, I don't believe in leaving anything on a wing, ever. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, I clean my wings. And um, whether, whether I would take somebody off of somebody else's plate and do it, you know, like, it's, it's, it's like, you know, that joke where you're so poor. How poor are you? Yes. Well, I ate barbecue, barbecue chicken on Tuesday. And I licked my fingers on Wednesday. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll to-go box those bad boys, and I'll eat them later yeah, if I have absolutely. to. I mean, yeah. my goodness. All right. Well, oh, oh, actually, uh, true or false, Baldy, you are a baby wipes guy. When it comes to wiping, are you cool with just the traditional toilet paper? I've never used a baby wipe in my life. <laughs> Not even as a baby, I imagine. Baldy's no. like, give me, the, give me the real stuff. <laughs> okay, we appreciate uh, your time as always, Baldy. Okay, you bet, guys. Enjoy the games this weekend. I guess we'll talk next week.